The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 110 of your distance learning session for Geology Upper 6 Science with Kenneth Yosimbon. As we proceed to examine the content of our lesson, we will first look at the assignment we had during the last lesson, that is lesson 109. We ended lesson 109 by requesting that while at home, we should outline and describe the stages of mining operations. Outline and describe the stages of mining operations. The question, the question is on two sides. You have outlining and then describing. Remember that these are AC type questions and we have to be able to express ourselves and equally bring in information that is essential in order that we have a good understanding of mining operations. So as approach, first part of the question was outlining. You are outlining, you are simply stating. So the stages of mining operations will involve prospection, exploration, development, exploitation, and reclamation. Those were the ones that we saw. We equally say that we could reduce them to four. That is if we merge prospection and exploration. Now, those are the different stages illustrated in the flow diagram. We said prospection is the search for mineral deposits. Search for mineral deposits. Why exploration is the work of assessing the size, shape, location, and value of the deposit. So you should be able to make, even though we are merging prospection and exploration, that you should know that the difference between the two is that prospection is the search for mineral deposits. The key word there is search. Whereas for exploration, the key word is assessing. There is a difference between search and assess. And in assessing, you are looking for, you are assessing the size, the shape, the location, and the value of the deposit. While development is the work of preparing access to the deposit. You want to, you know, come out with the mining plan and then factor out the equipments that are necessary and then you bring them to the site. While they are at the site of the resource, then or the reserve, then exploitation work sets in. So by exploitation, we mean the work of extracting the mineral or extracting the material that makes up the ore. Then after the extraction work has been done, the last stage of mining op uh, operation involves reclamation. That is making land where the extraction work has been done 
to be suitable again for future use. Those are the different operations and brief descriptions that we were supposed to give as answer to the question under our assignment. Now, we continue with our topic, Applied Geology. We saw before application of geological materials and economic uses of rocks. We also have seen uh, the basic extraction steps of all deposits. Today, we shall focus on prospection and exploration methods. So, our lesson 110 is titled Prospection and Exploration Method 1. We will handle it in two lessons. So, for part 1, we will try to concentrate on some non-geophysical methods. Whereas part 2, we will concentrate on geophysical methods of prospection and exploration methods. Now, to evolve through our lesson, we need lesson objectives. we we'll come out with some prerequisites. Then we we'll have a real-life situation, have some hypotheses, carry on with learning activities that will help us to be able to bring out the content for prospection as well as exploration method one. Then we will have a kind of a recall and then carry out some application exercises and end our lesson with an assignment. As our objectives, you will, by the end of this lesson, be able to outline and describe prospection and exploration methods of geologic resources. Remember that we are grouping it as geologic resources because it's in diversity. Well, as information that is vital, we will need information from chemistry because in assessing and, uh, you know, trying to factor out the materials that are of economic benefits, it is important for the composition to be conversal. Then we will need to know if the material will be beneficial or not beneficial. So we need knowledge from economics. And then we need to know areas where to look for this. So geographically, we need to have a good knowledge on climatic zones, as well as the geomorphology of an area in order to track out different geologic resources that are necessary. Then we have a lot of calculations and especially physics, properties of different materials, as well as, you know, the dimensions or better still the geometry. So the knowledge on mathematics and physics is vital as far as prospection and exploration methods are concerned. We need knowledge from structural geology and denudation geology. Then, we need knowledge from tectonics because they present the different areas where geologic resources may be outcropping in the field. Then, most essentially, knowledge from the different petrological types because, like we established, rock types are associated or all deposits or concentration are associated to rock formation. So we need knowledge on igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and sedimentary rocks in order to grasp a better understanding of prospection and exploration methods of geologic resources. Then, to understand how this, the, uh, these resources uh, uh, evolve in order to concentrate at better quantities that can be exploited for economic re uh, reasons, we need historical geology. In other words, the knowledge from stratification as well as fossilization. So, in our real life situation, geologic knowledge is used to solve economic, social, and cultural problems of humanity. 
that are associated with geological factors. That is a fact. So we end at this level, just in embracing the fact that the economic, social, and cultural problems can be solved using geological knowledge, especially when they are related to geological factors within the human living. So our problem here is, what would guide the extraction of these materials which occur in strata and in different localities? to reduce their impact and increase their benefits to man. This already guides you to understand that in order to solve a problem, maybe using geological resources, we may be creating another problem. So, what are those different elements that we can easily use in extracting geologic materials in order that we reduce problems and increase the benefits to man. One, is it possible to go by mastering as well as using geophysical and traditional methods that are saved? Or we go on disorder on the earth surface. We concentrate only on the extraction and nothing more, nothing less. But better still, we concentrate on establishing stability. Whatever happens, we restore stability wherever materials are found. Or we go for how costly the materials may be. As we go through the content of our lesson, we will be able to know which of these hypotheses is correct in order that geologic materials can be extracted in a way that Problems are reduced why, their benefit, why the benefits of those materials are increased towards man. In our learning activity, we look at this flow diagram. It's a diagram that goes with activity, as, and then you have time. It means that in mining operations, whichever method is supposed to be used, there is going to be an activity involved, and that activity will have to take time. So that way we, you will go with uh, you have association or area selection. Then after area selection you have application and then you have you know you could go with airborne surveys. Can equally go with geochemical surveys you know with geophysical surveys. And then with drilling with uh, uh, trenching. And then you can go equally with environmental surveys as well as feasibility studies. So when you look at a grouping of these different activities that happen with respect to time, what do they insinuate? It should already tell you that we are involved in prospection and exploration. Therefore, the different methods of exploration and prospection, uh, uh, of prospection and exploration of all can be separated into two. You have geophysical and non-geophysical methods. Today, in our lesson, we will concentrate on the non-geophysical methods. So, exploration methods. You have airy photography. You have well lodging. You have radiometric, and then you have electromagnetic. You also have borehole. You have paleontologic methods, you have drilling methods, you have oil seeps methods, you have surface mapping, and you have geophysical methods. So, the other methods that we have been mentioning up to surface mapping are grouped as non-geophysical methods, whereas you have geophysical methods. Today, we will concentrate only on non-geophysical methods. So, ARI photography, what is it all about? This is the recognizance stage of what? Prospection. And it involves the use of AI photographs to predict some resources and their structures. Take note that in AI photography, there it is a recognizance uh, stage of prospection. Remember that prospection simply means what? Search. And it will, for this search to proceed well, ARI photographs are taken in order to predict uh, the resources 
as well as their structures. Now, what are the apparatus and maybe the equipment or the methods that is used under ARI photography? It involves the use of Landsat by low flowing planes to take ARI photographs of the prospected area. Now, the planes are not going to flow too far into the sky. If not, they will gather information that is very, very, very blurred. So the planes are supposed to flow near the land surface in order that they can track down those photos of prospected areas for us. The photos are therefore analyzed to have clues about the area uh, 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 about the area and what can be obtained from that area. Then we can now therefore use these photos to produce geological maps of the area that are uh, prospected for the ores. Now for surface mapping. Surface mapping involves mineral deposits mapped and their extent as well as the dimensions at the level of what measured of course reserves or measure a measured resource remember that under our lesson on resources on geologic resources we said resources are categorized into measured you have indicated and you have you, you have uh, uh, that is when we come to measure it means we have already known the resource in three dimensions. That is why they become what? Indicated or mindable reserves. Now, once the map has been established, they are now used to determine thickness and the structural attitudes of, uh, of the resource. In this case, most likely to be coal. In our lesson on map work, we talked about cool seams and then resolving three point problems. This is how the information is gathered and we can use to resolve three point problems, especially when we are in the search for cool seams. Drilling method. In the drilling method, we are talking about fields of ores not exposed at the surface. So in order to discover these fields, what must we do? We need to drill bore holes. So the drilling method also involves the borehole method. These boreholes are drilled in different localities. Or in the same localities, they are drilled at different points. Now, after they have been drilled, what happens? The information is therefore used to determine the thickness as well as the geometry of the deposits. If it is a coal seam, after having drilled so many boreholes in the same locality at different points, then you can be able to give uh, maybe uh, accessible information on the thickness as well as the geometry. That is, you can be able to state the size either in two dimensions or in three dimensions just by doing, doing drills of boreholes in an area in the search for ores. Now we get to spontaneous polarization. Spontaneous polarization. Now, this method depends on oxidation potentials. That is where we say that we need essential knowledge, better knowledge in chemistry, in order to be able to factor out in some of these methods. Because without the knowledge of chemistry, it will be difficult to, you know, understand polarization, as well as knowledge from physics also. So, this polarization method, why we know the oxidation potential of materials, it therefore helps us to be able to determine the pH of the rock. At certain values of pH, you can therefore know that there is this resource. Especially if, uh, because we uh, know that pH is what? 
the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. And it helps us to know the basicity, the, acid, uh, the, the, the uh, acidity, as well as the neutrality of materials. So when this information is gathered, if it is a, uh, a resource that is basic in composition, we can quickly track, uh, track out what is, or we can quickly look for it. If it is information that is neutral, meaning that the pH is 7, then we can quickly know which resources fall within such pH uh, uh, values. And if it is below 7, we quickly know that it is acidic. That is how the spontaneous oralization method is carried out. We have paleontologic method. With the paleontologic method, we are talking about the use of fossil remains as well as traces to search for geologic resources. From our knowledge on fossilization, we learned that fossils are, or simply is a Greek word that means dug up from the ground. And therefore, fossils are remains of ancient organisms that are preserved in some sedimentary rocks. So just from the paleontological method, you can already know where to track resources that are fossil-oriented. So it is most likely related to what? Energy resources. You have coal seams or you have coal, you have uh, petroleum, you have natural gas. So this paleontological method is very essential to search for energy resources or fossil fuel. We have oil seeps. With the oil seep method of prospection as well as exploration or oil seep uh, dis uh, discovering method of resources, it has to do with tracing resources along structural and stratigraphic boundaries. We did a lesson on oil traps. So, along areas where we have uh, oil, or we have petrol, or petroleum, or we have coal, or we have uh, natural gas, there could be leakages. Those leakages now, uh, therefore, indicate the presence of hydrocarbons, at least from the source rock, especially in areas that are faulted or in folded areas where there is interception. You can have springs that flow out of the source rock. And in those springs, you may have traces of oil settling at the top. You can equally have, you know, underground water circulations that maybe may end up being intercepted on the surface. And those areas will create leakages that will cause some oil settling. That will help us to know that that area contain our hydrocarbons. And remember that hydrocarbons are most likely related to petroleum as well as natural gas. The better still, it can also help us know high concentration of carbon, which is related to coal, especially in areas that involve the composition and the biological as well as chemical transformation or modification of plant materials. As a recall, the work of assessing the size, shape, location, and economic value of deposits implores methods like Ari photography geophysical methods, well lodging, radiometric, electromagnetic, borehole, paleontologic, drilling, oil seeps, and surface mapping methods. We said that prospection and exploration methods are categorized into two. We have geophysical methods and non-geophysical methods. The non-geophysical methods are the ones that we have exploited, and we re-emphasize that they involve ARI photography, well lodging, radiometric method, electromagnetic method, 
you have borehole, you have paleontologic, you have drilling, oil seeps, as well as surface mapping. Don't be distracted with electromagnetic as well as radiometric methods. Those are the ones that overlap, so we can bring them under geophysical as well as non-geophysical. But in our, for our concern at this level of geology, we have taken them to uh, geophysical methods, which will be treated during our subsequent lesson. So we dive into some exercises to know if we learn something in the course of our lesson. Question number one. Array photographs of all prospected areas are taken using, again, array photographs of all prospected area are taken using A, Landsat, B, Radar, C, Cameras, D, Periscopes. Our correct answer is A. Array photographs of all prospected areas are taken using Landsat. Now, secondly, thickness and structural attitudes of coal can be determined from exposures at the earth uh, surface using thickness and structural attitudes of coal can be determined from exposures at the earth's surface using A, surface mapping, B, drilling method, C, array photographs, D, spontaneous polarization. Our correct answer is A. So thickness and structural attitudes of coal can be determined from exposures at, uh, at the surface using surface mapping. Exercise 3. Boreholes are drilled during all exploration to determine boreholes are drilled during uh, all exploration to determine A. Quality and quantity of the ore. B. Thickness and geometry of the deposits. C. All oxidation potential. D. The pH of the rock. Correct answer is B. Boreholes are drilled during all exploration to determine the thickness and geometry of the deposits. As assignment, you're going to align and describe four prospection and exploration methods of geologic resources. Want to exploit more of this lesson? You can read on the following uh, uh, references, texts, which are uh, part of the recommended textbooks used for advanced level geology. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on prospection and exploration methods too. <laughs> Gani la kiri watergendong, esertina bia dinkido, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen, tam tama mote tam zabike, tam tama tonge tam zabike, tam tam tama mote tam zabike, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen.